Americans who have called them spoiled kids, KFC, Java, and whatnot. And you have people who have been around you talking into your ear with regard to some of these things. And many people have ventured to actually say that this amounted to a vote of no confidence. Is there going to be some kind of shakeup that actually acknowledges that this is not where we should have been and therefore uh, I am sorry Kenyans and this is what I'm doing about it because short of that, how are we to know that we will not find more of the same? Watch this space. There are those who have said now that clearly there are many people who have lost confidence in Parliament. There are those who have lost confidence in you, that maybe the way to regain the legitimacy is to go to an election. There is no provision. You know, we are a country of the rule of law. Yeah? We must, whatever it is that we do, we must keep it within the parameters of the rule of law. And uh, we cannot take what has happened over the last two weeks or, or thereabout and say we are going to abrogate our constitution. I, I think we will be going towards anarchy. And I don't think that is where we want to take our country. There is a demand on me as president and I have said because of where we are, because of what has happened, there is going to be a thorough cut down on many things, whether we are talking about allowances, maybe even we should have a conversation around salary. We had a meeting here with MPs and even them they are persuaded, maybe it is time to ban Harambe's so that uh, we, 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 we remove avenues of uh, people participating in uh, Lajis demonstration of, you know, uh, opulence. And I want to tell you that I am going to take action. I am going to work on this. I know what we should do, but I am also not going to be reckless and take the country into a crisis. I will make sure that I act responsibly and listening to what the people of Kenya are saying. I don't know if this will preempt you, Your Excellency, but one of the most serious concerns that have been coming out, including in the Gen Z demonstrations, is the question of corruption. And uh, right through this interview, you've not mentioned the word. Um, and even as you go into that, I want to give you two illustrations. Kenyans dealt with or, or, or encountered the problem of fake fertilizers and you never took action against your cabinet secretary for agriculture. Before that, we had the scandal around the importation of edible oil, which Your Excellency, we don't know where the edible oil is to date. I don't think it ever found itself to the market. Again, there is a cabinet secretary uh, 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 in that ministry. And also, what got into the market was uh, condemned sugar. And when we look at all the information around these three cases, these are people close to you. They're cabinet secretaries. And so, you are unable to take action against them. So, why should you be trusted now to act? Because there are those who read and say you are really a hostage of those who campaigned for you to become president. They get away with anything. Three things, Linus. Um, we hadn't reached the question of corruption. So don't unfairly accuse me that I have not spoken to it. I am ready to speak about it. So that's not number one. Number two, I fired the CEO of KEBS, when the uh, 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 sugar thing came up. Number two, on fake fertilizer, 
the minister, Mithika Linturi, was taken through a process in parliament. The CEO of National Serials Board, the general manager of National Serials Board, and other seven members of staff are in court, as I talk to you. The people who signed the contract, you, they are in court. You spare big fish and roast the small fish? No, uh, let, me, let me just finish. Yeah. Because I, I need uh, Linus, you know, I, I, am, I am a fair person and I am a believer in the rule of law. Even though I may not like you, but I must respect that there is a due process. The moment, you know, uh, we will have a minister who is charged in court, meaning there is evidence that they have participated in crime. Believe you me, I will take the action that is necessary. But if somebody is taken through a process and that process comes out without uh, an, in, uh, an indictment. I mean, surely we must, we must give somebody the benefit of doubt until it is proven. But and the fact that yeah. the CEO, general manager, and all the people that were there who's, who actually evidence was found have been arraigned in court. Isn't that a step in the right direction? What a political let responsibility. Me, me, what a me, political let responsibility. Me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me finish. And then number three, the other one you asked me was edible oil. The people who are involved in edible oil, I fired them and they are in court. We have a new management in Kenya National uh, Trading Corporation. In fact, we've just hired a new management for the Kenya National Trading Corporation. So th those are actions that I have taken. Can I and for your information... Vo void of what Joe is calling political responsibility. Yeah. I mean, I mean but, but you see, else in the but, ministry but, can but, be... But you see, yes. but you see uh, gentlemen, if there is no evidence against a, a minister, surely, do you, do you want me to fire somebody if there is no evidence? You know? There was a time uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, as I served him as his deputy, removed six cabinet secretaries. But eventually, they were found that they were innocent, and we had to appoint them to be ambassadors. You know, so, so some of these, you know, actions must be tampered with process yeah. of law, you know, due process. So, Unless we follow due process, uh, gentlemen, we will, we, will, we, will, we will end up being something else. Allow me up to, to this, just, just a moment, just a, a, a moment, Eric, in, in a moment. Yeah. Because up to this point, Your Excellency, mm. uh, if I don't want us to lose the context. The last two weeks have been extraordinary. We've never seen anything like this. You have KDF uh, uh, troops um, in the streets of Nairobi. Up to this point, uh, Your Excellency, and including on the question that I've just asked you of accountability within your government, do you think you are addressing the grievances that have made thousands of Kenyans across the country in places that were unimaginable to get out to the streets to say Ruto must go? Do you think up to this point they feel you've addressed their grievances? Mm, I am not in their space, so uh, I, I am doing what I believe I should be doing. I have taken the responsibility to withdraw the uh, finance bill with all the attendant consequences that I have done. I know what it means and I know where it takes the country and it is not a simple decision for me to make. And for your information, the finance bill was going to take Kenya big steps forward. But it's a sacrifice I've had to make because of the political reality that we are in. Yeah. But it will mean counties will have to take maybe 30 billion shillings yeah. off their budget. Yeah. It means we have to reduce CDF.
by 10, uh, maybe 10 billion shillings. It means we have to rethink about what to do with JSS teachers. Yeah. It means we have to put on the freezer. We wanted to hire another 20,000 teachers because they are kids who do not have, uh, who do not, who do, who do not have teachers. It means we have to work on our UHC program. We, we thought we would upgrade, uh, for example, Linda Mama. Yeah. You know, we but, thought we would upgrade but, Linda Mama. Yes, something you excellent. But, we, oh. but it means we have to hold that. You, 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 and it means many things. Just tell them what else they want to hear. You, you, you are speaking outward. Mm. But looking at the grievances, they are also asking questions inward. Uh, from you, your, uh, uh, your Excellency. And uh, what I can hear from these grievances that have been expressed quite loudly, you said you're not in their spaces. Uh, we sometimes get into the spaces to listen to what they're saying. And all they're saying is you cannot be, for the next three years, the president that you've been for the last two. So what is that that you're going to change about? That, that, that's, why, that, that, that's why, uh, Linus, yes. that's why, Linus, that's why we are here. Of course, it's not going to be business as usual with the kind of reality we are faced with now. It has to be different. Do, do you regret anything at all? What you should have done better? What your people would have done better? Well, maybe there are things we should have done better. We should have communicated better. I think the biggest problem we have, even with the finance bill, because the finance bill has great things for Kenya. The finance bill says we shouldn't be importing potatoes from Europe. The finance bill says we shouldn't be importing onions or eggs from Europe. The finance bill says we should be growing our own industries. We should be manufacturing diapers in Kenya. We have 10 companies doing that. We should be manufacturing all those things in Kenya. We should be expanding our manufacturing capacity. That is what finance bill was talking to. But I am sure we will recover that when we, when, when we have explained. Yeah. The biggest challenge that I regret is that we didn't communicate better. Maybe we, we failed in explaining to Kenyans what the finance bill was all about. Because I promise you, if I explain, if I am given a chance to explain to the people of Kenya what was in the finance bill and what the finance bill would have done for this country, every Kenyan would have agreed with me. But, but, would, but just, my regret yeah, is that they would we didn't say you were, you were here, Mr. President. They said you would have explained. We didn't, we didn't explain ourselves uh, better. Maybe my communication team failed. Maybe my, uh, not maybe, I'm sure my communication team uh, failed. Our communication uh, architecture did not deliver, did not get uh, the message out to the people of Kenya. Yeah. In fact, if you look at what people were saying, they were saying, for example, there is a matter of land on the finance bill. There was no matter of land in the finance bill, not even a single line. Mm. And it is on that basis that people rejected the finance bill and many other things that were not in the finance bill. Now, communication is about words, uh, uh, Mr. President. Let's go to the deeds, because when you see what Gen Zs are doing, for the first time in the history of this country, we've had protests on the altar of the Holy Family Basilica. Because the young people of this country are telling you the political culture uh, which you've been part of, of having politicians speak in church, uh, converting the platforms into, uh, uh, con con converting the pulpit into campaign platforms, must end. So I'm not hearing you addressing and looking more inward uh, into this whole picture that the Gen Z is, uh, is painting. They're not just talking about uh, some of those things that you're raising. On that, Linus, I have even had an occasion to speak to church leaders here. On that, on matters of politics on the pulpit, I am 100% aligned. We shouldn't be using pulpits in churches or in, uh, or in any other places of worship to uh, prosecute politics. It is not right. And, and I agree, we need to change that culture. We need to change the culture of Harambe. Harambe started as a noble uh, exercise. It, it supported many people to go to school. It supported many people to, 
uh, deal with the challenges of, uh, of medication and hospital bills. But I think it has been stretched. It bred corruption? It has, it has stretched too far. And I think it's it time, bred corruption? as a country, we must stop corruption, we, we must stop uh, Harambe's, yeah. because it is, it, it is occasioning and it is uh, um, breeding, if I may say, corruption. Yeah, because when you are aid of a much lower pay, uh, pay grade,